everyone, it's Ross, and today we're going to eat some breakfast. <laughs> I'm going to eat it with you guys today and uh, just talk a little bit about the fruits I have uh, currently. We have many blackberries coming in now. They really are a late season um, crop here on the primacanes. And if I can get them to be a little bit earlier, I would. Um, I'm going to try to focus on that next year. This is called Primark Freedom, and I talked about Primark Freedom quite recently. It's a very large blackberry. I mean, they're huge, they're very sweet. Um, I'm also getting things right now, such as strawberries, in an endless amount. My Mara de Bois Day Neutral strawberries just don't stop. I'm also getting on the other side of the house here, raspberries that don't stop. Um, we've pretty much gotten alpine strawberries, little alpine strawberries, nonstop throughout the season. You can see the plants down here. These guys really pack a punch. And we've also gotten tomatoes that haven't really stopped, even the beefsteak tomatoes. Um, I'm getting tomatoes, guys, in so many numbers that... I can't eat all... I can't, I can't eat them all. Um, same thing with... Specifically the raspberries um, There's just so many and we're in October now and you can see over here <clears throat> These are my figs that I picked this morning. We had a nice rain last night um, That really came down hard out of nowhere thunderstorms out of nowhere huge winds out of nowhere. I Mean these trees got drenched for like an hour uh, It was supposed to be like close to an inch of rain in three hours. I think it didn't last nearly that long, but all that excess rain split some of these figs, uh, created some mold along the edges here. Um, and you know, just kind of made me come out here this morning and pick some of these figs when I normally wouldn't have. So, you know, these here are Black Madeira. Um, this is Black Madeira KK, and it's just split wide open. I haven't really gotten many Black Madeiras this year that weren't split open. Um, very, very few. In fact, I'm glad that I filmed the first Black Madeira I got of the season because that was really the only one that so far hasn't split. Um, but it is October. And what happens to fig trees and other fruits in October is that the heat decreases, the day length decreases, and you have a situation where figs don't ripen as quickly. Um, so I'm actually, we have about a month left of the season, and on this Black Madeira UC Davis tree, I'm not sure if we're going to get all the figs off of here to ripen, which is really upsetting because I put a lot of work into this tree. Um, I didn't think, th I thought the crop was quite large, you know, it was a heavy crop on this tree. Most of them I gotten off of this tree have split. The same thing with my Black Madeira KK, which is back here. Um, we still have quite a few figs on the tree that mm, probably won't ripen. Uh, maybe they will. But it really goes to show you that the winner of the three, whether it's Black Madeira, Preto, Black Madeira KK, is Italian 258. And Italian 258 is going to be finished, its entire crop, mostly before October 1st. I only have one, two, three, four, five, five figs left on this tree, which was loaded... And unfortunately, most of the Italian 258s got decimated in the amount of rain we had in September. So unfortunate when the rains came this year to also be ripe, to also be decimating my Black Madeiras. But uh, at least in the future, I can know that Italian 258 will ripen a full crop mostly before October. So that's really impressive for me. And um, I'm glad I have multiple copies of it. You can see here's another copy down here. We also have an air layer on it. 
and I have an in-ground tree that I'm quite hopeful will do pretty well here. Now, there's still quite a interesting variety of figs ripening every day. Um, a lot that I've never tried. More that I'm getting uh, a better taste on, a better handle on. You know, you're learning more and more about each individual variety. Uh, things like Socorro Black have ripened quite well. And, you know, I, I put that one in the same camp probably as Italian 258. You know, it ripens most of its crop, even though it's more of a late season fig, guys. It's ripening most of its crop before October. You can see there's only a few figs left on that one. We also have things like uh, Verdino del Nord, which are getting blasted by the rain, but uh, this fig has the ability to dry on the tree. So we're gonna let this one hang as long as humanly possible to see if we can achieve that, even in October. It should have been dry last night. Um, you know, we've had so much rain come in here that it's kind of cyclical, right? You know, you're gonna have a dry period, you're gonna have a rainy period. Um, so I was quite surprised to see the rain last night. But the dry weather in October, even though, well, I should say the not rainy weather in October, even though it's, it's, uh, it's colder, the days are shorter in October, at least we're going to get some dry weeks, which is what I'm hoping for. I, I would say we, we, we have about, you know, a month before our first frost, which means we probably have about two good weeks in October of decent weather before things go to hell. Um, so we're eating these figs this morning and I'm going to pick them or I'm going to cut them open here for you. I'm going to cut out the mold. We're going to do a little bit of a taste test. I know uh, this year has not been the ideal year for growing figs for a lot of people in the Northeast. If you live, if you live here and it's your first year growing figs, I'm sorry. This is pretty horrible. Um, for me though, because I was able to use a greenhouse and I have a lot of earlier ripening varieties, those didn't give me much trouble. Um, in fact, a lot of them ripened before um, September, so before even the rains came in, which is quite incredible. Anyway guys. These figs really are a mess when they have the mold in them like this. And you don't want to eat the mold, but you can eat around it for sure. These figs are not going to win any beauty contests. I'm not even sure if I'm going to eat these black Madeiras. They don't look ripe. We'll cut them open. Just for you guys. This one actually has scale on it. It's an absolute mess trying to get these figs to an eatable state, um, an edible state, I should say. So, sorry about that, guys. But this is what I had to go through with this morning. We also have a fig here called GM175. Which, in the, in the past when I tried this fig, it reminded me a lot of Sultane, a fig that I really enjoyed last year that I grew. Oh wow, that looks good. So, I have a feeling, guys, that Black Madeira is just going to get destroyed. Uh, at least in the Northeast, I think people are really going to stray away from Black Madeira. Um, it doesn't have enough time in the season, I think, to ripen a full crop. Even with the greenhouse head start that I gave it a really reasonable head start, it still is taking forever. 
But these are all the figs, guys. We have uh, Black Madeira here, Black Madeira here. This is Green Aishia UC Davis. Very tasty fig, an Adriatic type. And then this is Socorro Black in the middle, which definitely looks the best. Looks the most ripe, I think. This is GM 175, a fig found by uh, Georgie. Beautiful fig, reminds me of Sultane, but uh, this particular one does not. It's got an interesting thick neck on it that reminds me of like a Col de Dom. Look how thick that neck is. That's crazy. So let's try these guys. Um, let's go with the Blackberry first. Mm. Man, that's sweet. Super sweet. And um, these are way better than the store, guys. Way better than the store. Um, now, you can look at the rat, the blackberry here. I want to show you something. Is that if all of the, like, the kernels, I guess you could call them, if this is like corn on the cob, but instead this is a blackberry, look closely at the kernels here. And if you see tints of red in the kernels, it's not exactly perfectly ripe. It'll have some acidity to it, which could be good for your for your taste buds, depending on what you guys enjoy. But when they're all fully black, all the kernels, it's extremely sweet. And um, I don't know. This blows any blackberry ever had at the store away by quite a bit so that was Primark Freedom and um, this is Black Badira here and I don't think we're going to eat this we may eat this one here so let's do that this one got is more ripe but it got more damage from molds and rain but we're going to eat it anyway because uh, this is a ripe black Madeira, guys. Sort of. It's not edible. That was not good. In any form. So, that really stinks, but I think a lot of the water got in the fig. When they split open like this, if any water gets inside there, because sometimes they're split open sky high. They're facing upwards. It's the most ridiculous thing. Other figs will be split open downwards like this, and the rain doesn't get in there. So this is Green Aishia UC Davis, which was facing downwards. So most of the rain should not be in this. But this is a very good fig. It's an Adriatic type that's similar to a lot of green-skinned, red interior figs like this, like Battaglia, JH Adriatic, Strawberry Verte, Blanche de Deuce Cezanne. I can go on and on and on. There's probably about 20 of them. Unknown Lake Spur. This one, my friend PA Figs, he has a YouTube channel and does fig reviews. He really likes this one compared to the other Adriatic types. So I decided to get one and see for myself. Yeah, it's quite good. I have a feeling he's right. Um, that this green Aishia from UC Davis is actually tastier than most Adriatic types. The problem with it so far is that it splits. It seems quite late. So, that's pretty much the gist of what PA Fig says is that it, exactly what I just said. So I'm pretty much in agreement. Very good though. Man, that's a good quality fig. Very, very good. Let's try um, GM175. This one has a fruity flavor. Whereas the green Ashia has a complex berry flavor to it with a lot of honey. This one has a fruity, like fruit punch, 
berry flavor to it and has a lot of honey in it. Yep. Still picking that up. Quite good. Believe it or not, even though this one's not as ripe as the green Aishia, I think, this one's just as good. It didn't split. It held up to the rain. It also sets well in my greenhouse. It's just overall a better fig here. This here is Sakura Black. Probably saved the best for last. Lots of honey that this fig produces. You can see that in there. See that pool of honey there, pool of syrup. You know, it depends on what, how you'd like to put it, but syrup honey, similar story. Got a nice interior color there, and they all get like this. Very good. Tastes like, uh, man, what does that taste like? Tastes like an artificial raspberry jam flavor, like a raspberry syrup, like a, like a, hmm. You know, there's like that artificial raspberry or strawberry flavor that they put on things. I don't know how to describe that exactly. It's like an artificial flavor that actually exists in nature. It's pretty crazy. Very interesting fig, but I still think it's quite tied with the green Aishia and the GM 175. I can't really give an edge to either to any of them. So, anyway, guys, that was the video. That was me eating breakfast with you all. Hopefully, you guys got some coffee while you were watching this in the morning. Got yourself your own breakfast. Maybe I should have said that in the beginning. But, uh, yeah, that's the situation going on here in Pennsylvania, guys. So I'll talk to you all later. Take care.